Hey guys, I'm back with another calculator programming tutorial. Today we're going to be making a fidget spinner program for the TI-84 plus CE, but it does not require color and while it may be slightly off on other calculators, it should work on basically any TI calculator. Uh, graphing of course um, and when I say program this is going to be more of an animation using output nothing fancy at all um, so we're going to create a new program I'm just going to call it program A and we're going to start out with a clear home good way to start any program um, and the main animation is going to be inside of a loop because we want it to be repeating so I'm just going to place down that loop a while and the first output that we want is probably going to be the center of the fidget spinner since that will never move uh, about the center of my screen is 513. If you're using a calculator that has like a 16 wide screen, of course, you know, account for all of that. Okay, so our first, so the fidget spinner has the three circles that spin around the center. So I think our starting positions for those, I think we want one directly above the center which would be those, and I'm just going to make that an O to differentiate it. Um, we're going to want one, so if we have one uh, on top of the center, we want, so if here's the center and here's one on top, we want two diagonally below it, I think. So they're both going to be at 6, and 6, 12, and 6, 14 would put it on either sides of the theta. Okay, so let's just see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So our next uh, stage of the animation, we want this to be rotated, which means that the piece that's directly next to the theta needs to move here, and these two pieces need to move here. So if we go to that, so we need to output so instead of that being there, since our center is at 513, we're going to 514 should put it directly to the right. And this piece will already be in place. So we need to add a piece in at 412. That's an O. So now that, that was right, but we didn't erase the last one. So now we have to erase the two pieces um, from up here that weren't reused. So the 413 we didn't use. So that needs to be erased. And for now I'm going to throw in a pause just because we're going to have to slow down the timing. And the 6... Um, the 612 wasn't used. The 614 was. So 612 can go. And then let's throw in another pulse and see what that looks like. Okay, that was wrong. Um, so instead of 612, I guess that was 614. Yes. Okay. So now that just doesn't look like it's working. Um, but what we want next is this um, O needs to move to the bottom of the theta and everything gets rotated around again. Um, so after this pause, we're going to output directly below the theta an O. And now we already have a piece in the top left and that's going to be this 412. So at 414 we're also going to need a piece. Um, I don't know why I'm saying piece. But I don't know what to call them on a fidget spinner. And of course we have to erase uh, the, um, the ones that we didn't reuse. So um, this 514 can go and we used the 412, but not the 612 that was already there. 
so okay that may have sounded really confusing but let's see what that does and let's slow that down actually uh, pauses in here okay okay cool so of course that just doesn't look like it's working because we have not added the proper erase functions um, so now this is going to be the final step um, in this rotation of it um, because we had the piece right next to the fit on top to the right to the bottom now we need it to the left so that's going to be at 512 would put it directly to the left and that means that we need pieces at 414 and 614 so 414 614 now one of those is already going to have been placed on the screen and that's the 414 so that can be get gotten rid of make everything more efficient um, and now of course we need to erase the last section so let's see we're going to be looking at erasing we use the 414 so the 613 has to go and one of these has to go um, the 412 I believe 412 okay let's just see what that does good okay that looks like it's working uh, so now I'm gonna go back here and this first section never erases uh, the last section and I'm just gonna make this three uh, it's going to erase all three because I don't really feel like making this efficient anymore uh, so 512 and 614 need to go uh, 614 and 614 is already 614 is used so that doesn't actually have to get deleted um, so we use 614 and then 6 no 414 will still be on the screen so that also has to get erased okay so let's look at that okay so you can see it's spinning as I tap enter which I guess that's sort of like you know what a actual fidget spinner is uh, you know like I have to be constantly tapping enter to make it go but that's also really slow so what I'm gonna do and you could obviously stop the program there and make it so that you have to tap it um, first of all I'm going to add in a get key that allows us to quit the program so I'm just going to make label A um, we're going to uh, clear the screen and just for good measure I'll throw in a stop and oh I should not have scrolled all the way through this catalog that's really annoying um, okay so now let's just throw in a get key uh, get key stores a if a equals see 23 would be delete um, or if they hit 1 2 3 4 45 is clear so delete or clear we're just gonna go to label a so that's going to quit the program when I hit delete Oh, uh, okay, so it's not working because there are the pauses. Uh, but that's about to be fixed, so that doesn't matter. So instead of this pause, I'm going to create two more variables. The one I'm going to name speed. Let's just make that five. I don't actually know if that's going to be good speed yet. And the other one is sort of arbitrary. We're just going to call it B because I've already used A. So after it runs this code instead of this pause we're going to add in a delay um, so first of all we're going to store 0 and B and then while B is not equal to our speed 
b plus one stores b. And then we're going to end that. So basically, in between each line of code, um, we're just going to keep counting up until in between each, each section. Sorry, we're just going to keep counting up until we hit the value that we've inputted, and then it'll move on to the next part of the animation. So we'll be able to set the speed and adjust it. Okay, so we're going to do that same thing again. We need to store zero back in B. Well, B is not equal to S. B plus one stores B. Do it again here. Uh, zero stores B. Well, B is not equal to S. B plus one stores B. And one more time, we're going to do that. Uh, zero stored B. Well, B is not equal to S. B plus one stored in B. Okay, so let's try that out. So that's going pretty fast. Uh, but we can what we can now do is we can edit this and we can set speed equal to 10 if we want to. And that should make it twice as slow. Okay, so we have that going and now delete exits it, which is good. Clear also exits it. Good. Um, and just, just because we already have this get key here, I'm just going to say if A equals uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. No, didn't mean to press the button. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 85. Okay, so 85 is going to be the key for minus, and S is greater than 1. S minus 1 stores S. So that's going, so if they hit the minus, our speed um, is going to increase. Um, and if A equals 95, S plus one stored in S. So the reason that I have this S is greater than one is so that they can't have a speed value um, less than one because if it was zero, B always gets added and, and like they're just, it wouldn't work. It would never move on. So that should allow us to change the speed in game. So if I wanna go faster and I spam minus, I'm gonna start going faster. If I hit plus, I'm gonna start going slower. And that's our that's our fidget spinner. So, I mean, there you go. That's uh, that's about done. 